Hi everybody! We have a video of Labradoodle puppies for you today and in this video we are doing an Australian Labradoodle puppy litter update. These little mini Labradoodles are six weeks old and these are the puppies from the Anui Anui litter at Van Isle Doodles. Hi, I'm Claire and in today's video we're going to tell you a little bit about each of these puppies, their personalities, what they've been up to lately, and we're going to talk a little bit about developing a bond with your puppy and introducing your puppy to our world. So these little puppies are mini Australian Labradoodles. And as sometimes what we do is just remind you of what the difference is between an Australian Labradoodle and a Labradoodle. I don't need that actually, thanks. And the difference between the two is that a Labradoodle is a Labrador Retriever and a Poodle and they tend to be a bit bigger. And an Australian Labradoodle is a Labrador, a Poodle, and Spaniel. Now those are the foundation breeds, and you can infuse those breeds in at any time in, a, in your breeding program. So let's say we had Blue Collar Girl here as our breeding prospect, whoops, and she grows up and she's old enough to have puppies, and we decide for some reason that we want to change something in our program, we could if we wish to breed her to a poodle, a Labrador, or a Spaniel. That's all perfectly legal. But at Van Isle Labradoodles, we don't do that. We no longer do infusions. We don't do early gens. We have multi-generation Australian Labradoodles. So our dogs are Australian Labradoodle to Australian, Australian Labradoodle and have been for more than eight generations for all of your puppies. And you can see at six weeks, these puppies are starting to play with toys and you can see they're starting to use the pee pads quite consistently now. So we have a variety of toys out here for them. We have some things for chewing and you can see Blue's using one of the chews there and that's because teething has begun. And at this point, these little Labradoodle puppies are putting everything in their mouths and they want to chew, 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 chew to get all their teeth through. So so we have more of the types of things that help them with that teething. So the little pink and brown giraffe there that Blue is chewing on is not a toy we would have introduced to them even a week ago as it would have been too hard. And you'll see Black Collar Girl here. She's attacking the caterpillar. She's giving it a shake. And she's also interested in our little handmade and braided uh, rope here. And this one's really flexible and this gives lots of teething relief. It's really good right from the time the puppies are little because it's soft and they can get their teeth right in there and chew away. Just like you see Black doing right now on the caterpillar's head, she's finding something and she's really digging her teeth in and really getting involved with the teething process. And you'll see that they move from toy to toy to toy. They're busy, they're active, oh, they're full of fun. Now one thing we often receive in people's applications, their homework, and from talking to them is a request for a calm puppy. So puppies are like two-year-olds. They're not particularly calm. They're busy, they're growing, they're active. They have things they want to do, places they want to go, and then go, 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 and then they're out, and then they're dead to the world, and they're just sleep, sleep, sleep. So you have spurts of both. You have longer periods of inactivity and sleep, and shorter periods of these bursts of energy. So you don't get a puppy that comes home to you at eight weeks, or even at all for the first six months, where they are calm. They're going to be like this playing, ready to go, looking for your attention, looking to have something to do, something to chew, something to chase, something to wrestle with. Yeah, that's what puppies do. So it's your job as the parent to make sure that you allow your puppy lots of time and freedom and opportunity to get all of their zoomies out, if you will, have interactive toys for them, and don't put them in an X pen and say, here's your toy, see you later. That's like taking a young child and plunking them in front of the TV, turning it on and saying, there you go, that's your stimulation for the day. 
If you do that with a young child, you're going to have a young child who for sure sits there and watches the TV for a bit, but then they're going to be bored, they're going to be restless, and they're going to want to get up and they're going to have even more energy. Exactly the same situation for a puppy. So when they're going, like these ones are right now, you want to be sure to be right there with them, playing with them. So when they have the caterpillar like Blue does, you want to shake it for them. You want to throw it around with them. You want to play tug with them. Uh, you don't want to get too excited about the tug where you are uh, pulling their teeth out, of course. Very gentle, soft tug. But you get the toys and you go ah, 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 with them. You pick them up and you give them cuddles in between it all. And you talk to them. And you say, what are you doing, you little rascals? What are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing? Now, under normal circumstances of course we would probably be outside or we would have a bigger area where we were playing with the puppies but for the purposes of this video we have a small enclosed area and there's no reason why you can't at home have your puppy in a small enclosed area like this so you know your furniture is safe you know if they do go to the bathroom they're going to use the pee pad not pee on your floor and if you have a child or yourself you can be in here with them in this nice small enclosed area where they're going to stay close to you and you can really interact with them. This is particularly good on a rainy day. On the west coast here of Canada, lots of times we have rainy days and uh, it's not that much fun to go and play outside with your puppy, so you do it inside. And once they get older, you can expand the area and you don't have to use the X-Pen all the time but it's really good for them to associate the X-Pen with lots of fun and excitement. Because the X-Pen is what you're one going to use when it's alone time for your puppy. Now this is an important thing to remember as well. You should not be always with your puppy. Even if you work from home or you're a stay at home, retired person, stay at home, mom or dad, you do not want to spend all of your time with your puppy. You want your puppy to be able to learn how to entertain themselves and be okay on their own. And that's what you use this X-Pen for. So you have a space that's small, secure, you know your puppy is safe, you know that your puppy, all of your household things are safe from your puppy, and you give your puppy the pee pad, you're going to want to put your donut bed in here, and you're going to have some toys. And there, Hi-Ho just went to use the pee pad. She got her front feet on, on the pee pad, but uh, the back feet didn't quite make it into the right spot there. Uh, so that was a good try, and sometimes that will happy, happen with the young puppies. You'll see them, and they will just have two feet on the pee pad, but the pee might not quite make it on the pee pad. So be prepared for that. Um, it does happen. There, they, there you go. And you see purple just peed right on the pee pad. Yay, good girl. Good girl. Now these guys are just starting to use the doggy door and to learn to go outside to pee. You'll saw, you saw there that they responded to being rewarded for peeing in the right place. So this is when you can start working on house training, which is of course what we're doing with all these puppies because they're all in our Head Start program. So they are all starting to learn that outside is the place to go pee and where you get told good job. Purp, purp. There you go, come here. So you heard Purp, purp was crying there. And that's because she can see Reynolds on the other side of the camera and she wants him to interact with her. So when you put your puppy in here for alone time, you don't put them in here for alone time when they're like this. No, you want to be in here, you want to have them outside, you want to get all of their energy out. That's when you start leaving them alone. If you put them in here when they've got lots of energy and ask them to do this as alone time, it's going to be a fail for you and it's going to be a fail for your puppy. Now one other thing to keep in mind, what your puppy has learned, what they have been trained to do here in Head Start, they will start to unlearn as soon as they go home if you don't keep up the learning and reinforcing things. And in, in three days time, a dog of any age will have completely unlearned anything that they have learned previously. So you want to be sure that you're all organized, you're all set up, and that you continue on with everything that needs to be done with your puppy. So that means leaving them alone in here, 
after you've exercised them, played with them, spent some time with them, and then told them how great they are here in the X pen. You want to make sure you don't leave them alone for too long or ask them to do more than they're able to do at their young age. These puppies are only six weeks old and really, you know, you can't compare them to a two-year-old, but just barely. And you'll see Blue's just having a fantastic time with the caterpillar there. I think you can see that on the video. He's just, or she's just really going to town with the, with the caterpillar having a really good play. And that's fantastic. And when she's doing that kind of thing, you can just be sitting here like I am. She doesn't care whether I'm interacting with her right now or not. So this is all part of learning your dog's communication. You have to watch them, look at them, learn what they're saying to you. So Blue right now is saying she's totally fine on her own with her toy. She's happy I'm here, but otherwise she couldn't care less about me right now. Purple is telling me all sorts of times that, excuse me, I want you, I want attention, I want to interact with you. And she's done that by talking with her little squeaks. Oh, yes, I know. And she wants to give me kisses. And she just is like, oh, oh, I'm so excited to see you. I just want you to come and play with me. I want to do things. Hi-ho. Silver Collar is saying the same thing. Black as well. Now Blue's over here going, okay, me too, me too, me too. So you just have to watch them. And the most important thing of all when you get your, your little Labradoodle puppy home is to build the bond with them. Watch them, spend lots of time observing them. Learn how they say things to you so that you understand when they're saying, I need you, I want a hug, I want to be alone, it's time to go out to go to the bathroom. Uh, anything like that. You want to be able to understand them, provide them with whatever it is they're asking for, and also let them learn to about you. They have to learn all about you and what it is you're actually asking them to do. They need to learn to understand you and speak your way because of course they understand me, but when they leave here, you're going to be a little bit different from, from me. So it's going to take them a little bit to learn your language. But what you really want to do is build the trust, build the bond, make sure that they are completely secure with you and trust you. You have to earn their trust and you have to earn their respect and you can lose it as well. And if, unless you have that, your puppy's never going to listen to you and they're not going to respond to what you're asking them to do. And the final thing I want everyone to keep in mind is Puppies are living in our world, which is nothing like dog world. Nothing that the humans ask them to do is what they would do as dogs. So what we are asking them to do, we want to figure out, hey, 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 no, uh, 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 no, uh. So we, this is behavior we don't want. Okay, see what purple's doing? This is really bad and definitely not something you want your puppy to do. So she's old enough to be told no now. So now that she's doing it, we go, hey, hey, uh, uh. Oh, that just happened to work out. Good girl. Now you see uh, Hi-Ho is moving the pee pad, which I also don't want her to do. That's a harder thing for her to learn not to do. When you have the pee pads out, you may want to put something heavy on them to secure them. We use bricks. It works quite well, uh, though you will be amazed at how much they can move things even with bricks on them, right? Yes, I know you know how to do that. Yes, indeed you do. But with, if uh, somebody comes and bites my clothes again, we'll go through the how to tell them no thing um, once more. And I think if I offer my sleeve to purple, she might be enticed to try chewing on it again. Okay, she's going to chew my bracelets, which I don't want her to chew either. And she's not going to do anything long enough. But basically what you want to do is you want to get their attention and go, hey, hey, hey. And then, uh-uh, uh-uh. Try not to use too many signals. We say uh-uh instead of no. No can sometimes be confused with a dog's name um, and a few other things. So you want to use something that's very distinct and uh-uh catches their attention. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Good girl, good girl, that's the way. And then when they release, you tell them they're a good girl. Yeah, good girl. But you don't get them so worked up that they start doing it again. Just that really good, yeah, way to go. That's the way. And you'll see right now, I'm rewarding them 
without giving them any treats. I am just rewarding them with my, hey, yeah, that's great, and some pets. And that is just fine with them. Of course, they love treats, but they are also very responsive to you just speaking to them. So you don't have to give them a treat every single time. If you're trying to teach them something, then you probably will. Goodness gracious, that's so many kisses. Thank you. That's a very good kisses. Hi, hi, ho. Hello, hi, ho. Do you have kisses too? <gasps> kisses? Oh, the snuggles. Oh, snuggles with hi, ho. So see right now, those two dogs were very different. The one was licking away, and here's purple jumping away. And hi, ho's just in for the snuggle. She says, that's good. I don't need to kiss. I just want to sit and be held. And so you want to just understand what it is your puppy's telling you. And hi ho, when she's asking for that, what she loves is if you put her upside down in your arms, you rub her tummy, and you do a little bit of a rock. She's just like, oh, heaven. So this is how we build bonds with our dogs. We do some nice eye contact here. We do a little bit of kisses. We do some soft voices. We tell them how much we love them. And that's how our dog learns to love us. Right, hi ho? The other thing, when you're out with your puppy or you have people over, try to limit how many people you have over when you first take your puppy home. You want them to get used to your environment. You want them to settle in and you don't want to overload them with stimulation. So try and maybe not have any visitors for a day or two and then just a couple and not for too long. And try to encourage your guests when they come in, they don't go, oh, look at the puppies. Oh my God, they're so cute. Oh, puppy, puppy. You see how they all reacted where they're a little bit like, oh my God, what is she doing? Why is she talking like that? Because they're not used to that. They're used to a very nice, calm, even voice. And we do go, oh, puppies. Oh, what good puppies we have. Oh, they're just the coolest puppies. Oh, they're so good. Yes. What good puppies. That, that sort of tone is fine, but not that super high excited business. And then try and get people just to be very calm and very relaxed around the puppy. Now here we go with biting my clothes again. So we're going to do the, it's showing you here. So, hey, uh-uh, very good, good girl, good girl, that's good. Now don't expect that that means that she's never going to do it again. Uh, normally I would have expected her to go right back to biting my pants, uh, but I did get her to, to stop doing it right away. And you saw, as soon as I clapped, she knew that that was something I was going to get attention for and probably tell her not to do. I do let them chew on my shoes uh, just because they're, they are not accessible to them at any other time. And I know they do need to chew on something, so I'm not too worried about the shoe part right now. But here we've got Blue chewing my thumb. Oh, she quit. She, it's like they already know what I'm going to do. Uh-uh. 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 Then what you want to do is offer them something else. To hear. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a good thing to chew. Oh, yeah. And she says, no, I'm not falling for that trick. I'm going to go bite my sister instead. Yeah, but hi, hostess. Maybe I'm going to play with this. So just use your common sense. Um, when people come, if you see your puppies getting overwhelmed <clears throat> and a little bit uh, fed up with all the people paying attention to them, then that's how you uh, start to earn respect and more trust pick them up and say, oh, time's up. I think my puppy's had enough. Move them into an X-Pen, move them into their crate, uh, somewhere where it is their safe spot, and just take them away from the person so that they're not constantly being bombarded with physical touch. Hey, Perpy, Perpy. Hi-ho said no, thank you. There you go. Good girl. So, there, and that's a perfect example. So Hi-Ho is very much aware that I removed the cause of her distress, which was purple. Purple was bothering her, jumping on her back, and so all I had to do was remove her, and now Hi-Ho is, is edging her way back up to me, because I know what she wants. She wants me to pick her up again. Hi. And she was edging her way up like that, because what she was saying to me there was, I'm a little bit nervous about purple coming and jumping on me. And so I'm going to come back to my safe place, but I'm just going to make sure I'm invisible while I'm doing it. Yeah, because I'm very smart. Yeah. So those are just some tips and tricks for when you take your little Labradoodle puppy home and how to continue all the wonderful things that they've learned. 
So we don't have any weights on the puppies today. They're six weeks old. We don't weigh them anymore once they're six weeks old. Uh, our next video is coming up in just a few days and that's our allocation video. So for our families, make sure your homework comes in today because to, uh, the deadline is coming up for you to submit your homework so that we can do your assessments and we can do our matching and you will find out which of these little cutie pie girls is going home with you. But they are all doing beautifully. So hi-ho, her little personality. So what's this little girl all about? Well, she's all about fun. She's a very fun loving girl. She's very cuddly. She's little. She's got lots of confidence. She's a very smart girl. She knows how to get herself out of predicaments, but she is a dog who is dependent on people to help her. She does need to have somebody help her if there's other dogs around or kids, young kids, who are, are being too much for her, just like you saw earlier. But she's a little sweetie pie. Yes, and very, very smart. Miss Blue Collar, Miss Blue Collar here is our beautiful little uh, apricot party. This girl is great. She's very independent. She's very well able to entertain herself, as you saw her doing with the caterpillar. She has no need for anyone to provide her with assistance. She's more than able to look after herself if somebody comes up and bugs her. She knows how to get herself out of that situation. Uh, she's a confident girl, a very nice uh, outgoing puppy, and definitely very independent. She is the most independent puppy in this litter. There's only four puppies, so that isn't a huge uh, <laughs> comment to me, but, but she is a very independent girl. Black collar girl, hello sweetie, very gregarious, tons of fun, confident, very snuggly, loves attention, able to look after herself on her own. Uh, the one who's best on their own is Blue. None of these dogs are afraid of any situation or new things. It's great. We, uh, we're really pleased with, with how content they are with all new situations. And then Purple Collar over there who's trying to beat up Hi Ho again, Perpy Derpy. She is the most outgoing out of everybody. She's the bossy one. She's the one who's got all the confidence, all the jazz. Oh yeah, she's just it. She's not afraid of anything. She's right out there. She's a forward puppy. She's full of life. She's got lots of energy, but she's also very good at settling down and she is a very, very good kisser. So that's just a little bit of a snapshot of their personalities. Now, when we do our allocations, we will tell you a little bit more about each of the puppies' personalities and how they match the family that they've chosen to be theirs. And I want everyone to remember one thing. This is a snapshot. This is what we've observed for the past eight weeks. This is who we have in front of us right now. This is the puppy we see. The puppy who we see and who's with us will change when the puppy goes home with you. You're going to be the one with the most influence on the puppy. Uh-uh, uh hey, uh-uh, perp, uh-uh. Good girl, good girl. Why don't we chew this instead? Oh yeah, what's that? Can you go get it? Oh yeah, oh no, I got bored with that. Hi, who's gonna go get it? Oh yeah, there you go, chew that, good girl. There's how you, a great example of how you distract, give them something else to do so that they're not chewing on you or your pants. There you go, good girl, hi-ho, good girl. Uh, so when they go home with you, they, they are going to mirror the situation they have at home with you, your environment, what's going on in your house, what's going on inside of you. So just keep that in mind uh, and do remember that it only takes them three days to unlearn what they've learned. So you want to be sure that you continue to reinforce all the things that they've done here. Everything we've talked about each week, it's not like it's some overwhelming task. You just have to remain positive. You have to be supportive. You have to be loving and you have to play with them. It's a terrible, terrible thing. Oh no, but can you imagine? We have to take you home and have fun with you and love you, terrible task. All of you will be very successful and do really well and the puppies will be there ha happy to help you through the way. So we hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, very soon will be our allocation video and that is going to be a super exciting day for everyone when we find out which puppy goes to which family. Thanks so much for watching.